Code Geass and Death Note are two popular anime each over a decade old. Despite the influx of many excellent new anime, these two shows popularity hasn't diminished at all. This is mostly because of the characters Lelouch v Britannia and Light Yagami. Since Death Note and Code Geass have so many similar elements, people naturally compared them. To no one's surprise, Lelouch vs. Light is on the top of that comparison list. This is a topic that I take great interest in, and since I clearly am not alone, we're going to compare these characters. With so many directions to take this conversation, I have decided to compare their intelligence. Often we see questions that ask, who would win in a fight? And that discussion often boils down to comparing the two characters' intelligences. So that's where we'll start. But here's the question. How do you compare the intelligence of two fictional characters or just people in general? Since there isn't a blind empirical definition of intelligence, no analysis will be completely accurate. My analysis is just an opinion rooted in my understanding of intelligence and how these characters use it. And I must say, I did a lot of research in preparation to better understand IQ and what it means to be intelligent since I wouldn't know. Through my research, Howard Gardner's theory on multiple intelligences made the most sense to use here. It's a diverse list that helped me analyze and appreciate the intelligence behind these two characters. And I find that only comparing the logical intelligence between Light and Lelouch and with any other fictional characters severely limits the conversation and doesn't really answer the question. Now, this video will compose of three parts. The first, I will define intelligence through Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences. Then I will go over the best examples of each character demonstrating the different intelligences. And finally, I will put it all together to answer who I think is the smarter character. A couple disclaimers before we begin. The obvious is spoilers for both Death Note and Kogias. The next is a little off topic, but it needs to be said. I have noticed that many fans of both anime have expressed disappointment when going from one to the other. The specific complaint is that Light is not as smart as Lelouch and vice versa. Keep in mind, Kogias and Death Note, despite many similarities, are very different anime. Kogias is a grander story in scale than Death Note, involving more characters and larger conflicts. And Death Note is a supernatural crime drama versus Kogias, a supernatural military war story. So this explains the difference between Light and Lucia's actions in both series. And here's some unsolicited advice. Don't go into Kogias expecting Death Note and vice versa. Lelouch and Light have similar intelligences but demonstrated in different ways. Alright, so now let's find out together between Light Yagami and Lelouch v Britannia whose intelligence is superior. Ah, uh, just one moment. Do you want even more? Obviously! See, I'm greed. I want everything you can think of. Then I propose a deal. Equivalent exchange! Huh? I'll give you more awesome stuff. If you please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Sorry about that interruption. We're off! Let's hit the road! According to Howard Gardner, there are eight types of intelligences. Visual spatial refers to being good with directions, charts, maps, graphs, and being able to identify things in space. One of its key characteristics is pattern recognition. The next one is verbal linguistic. People with this intelligence have a strong vocabulary and a great at memorizing information, not to mention they enjoy reading. An equally important aspect to this is excellent communication skills, especially in the context of public speaking and debating. The next intelligence is mathematical and logical, which refers to problem solving using reasoning and analysis. It encompasses testing theories and contemplating abstract concepts. The next intelligence is interpersonal, which means the understanding of emotions and motivations of others. People who are strong in this area are great at forming positive relationships with others, motivating others, and are great at conflict resolution. If interpersonal intelligence is the understanding of others, then intrapersonal intelligence is the understanding of yourself. This refers to emotions, motivations, self-awareness. A key component to this is self-reflection and analysis 
of both your strengths and weaknesses. Bodily kinesthetic is the intelligence on the movement of your body. This can be sports or anything requiring hand-eye coordination. A good actor, for example, has excellent body kinesthetic intelligence since part of their acting involves precise body movement. The last two on the list are musical and environmental, and to my knowledge, neither Lelouch nor Light have demonstrated any aptitude in either one of these intelligences. If there is an example of which, please let me know, although for the purposes of this analysis, it doesn't really matter. So now that you have a brief understanding on the different intelligences, let's now discuss, in my mind, the two best examples in both Death Note and Kogias, where Light and Lelouch use these intelligences. And I'm doing this because Gardner believes that having intelligence really shows when you can apply more than one type of intelligence to solve a problem. I want to use that idea here to explain the brilliance of each character when comparing their intelligences. With that in mind, Lelouch's two best examples of utilizing multiple intelligences is how he handles Mao and the Zero Requiem. With Light, it's his plan to stop Naomi from going to the police and saving Misa while also killing El at the same time. We will begin with Lucia's three victories over Mao, which takes place between stage 14 to stage 16. Before starting, I acknowledge that Lush made one critical mistake with Mao, but that doesn't impact the rest of his genius actions during these episodes. Lelouch encounters Mao three times. The first was in Narita, which led to the chess game in the cable car and Shirley's memory wipe. The second was at Clovis Land during C2's rescue, and the third was at Ashford after Mao takes Nali hostage. Let's start with the first one in Narita. Lelouch trials with C2 to find Shirley after learning she went there. After arriving, he gets a call from Mao, who was using Shirley's phone. Lelouch had no choice but to follow him to the train car. It's during the ride that they played chess. During the game, Lelouch figures out that Mao made a contract with C2 for a Gias power that allows him to read other people's minds. This conflict leads to one of the most controversial parts in the series when Lelouch used his Gias to wipe Shirley's memories of him. Some call this a stupid decision, myself included when I originally watched it, but through deeper analysis, this was actually a very brilliant call. Lelouch understood that his Gias power can only be used once on someone. He also knows that Shirley has feelings for him. If he just makes her forget the past events or his identity as Zero, there's no guarantee she won't find out again by getting involved in his life. The only way to future proof this is to make sure she forgets him entirely. Lelouch demonstrated logical, interpersonal, and intrapersonal intelligence here. He understood that to accomplish his goals, he'd have to give his relationship with Shirley. He figured out Mal's identity through deductive logic reasoning. He understood Shirley's feelings enough that what's best for her is if she forgets about him. All right, let's move on to the next encounter. And in this encounter, Lelouch needs to save C2 from Mao. He learns from listening to the recording on the phone that she went to Clovis Land. To rescue C2, Lelouch needed to get to Clovis Land without being in the range of Miles Gias. According to C2, it was 500 meters. Lelouch created a pre-recorded video to distract Mao giving the police enough time to arrive after he used his Gias on them. When we first watched the scene, it appears that the conversation is happening between Mao and Lelouch. Mao reads Lelouch's mind later on, which revealed that Lelouch predicted Mao's responses when making the video. This, however, was only a bluff on Lelouch's part and to piss off Mao. I see many people getting this wrong. Here's what really happened. He didn't predict anything Mao would say, rather how he would react, which is more plausible. All Lelouch did was talk about C2, which he knows is a sore subject for him. Lelouch's responses had nothing to do with what Mao was talking about. Lelouch used his understanding of Mao's motivations against him. The video was also timed long enough, so when it ended, the police would arrive. That's why Lelouch said, you lost Mao at that moment, and then seconds later, the cops showed up. Lelouch also had to make this convincing, which involves excellent acting on the video to make it appear as if it was live. In addition, since Lelouch knows that Mao can't turn off his Gias, thus reading everyone's mind at once, he can sneak in with the police undetected while Mao focused on the video. He used several Mao's weaknesses against him with the video, C2, and the distance limit. The third and final encounter with Mao involves rescuing Nunnally. Lelouch needed to disarm the bomb and capture Mao. 
His plan utilized Suzaku's high-level of kinesthetic intelligence to match the speed of the bomb to cut the correct wire. Lelouch instructed him to break the glass after hearing screaming. He then used Gias on himself to forget this plan, so when he went to face Mao in chess, Mao couldn't learn about the plan through reading his mind. After losing to Mao, Lelouch screams and Suzaku captures him. There is so much to unpack here. Lelouch used his knowledge to eager fight Gias to use it on himself. He used one of Mao's weaknesses against him by making him focus solely on him, thus keeping Suzaku a secret. Lelouch understands himself so well that if he would scream if Nali died. I guess Lelouch is aware that he freaks out a lot. I love the brilliance and the maleficence in commanding Mao not to speak. If Mao can't talk, then his power is basically useless. Yes, he could write down stuff, but it's not as effective, plus no one would take him seriously. Lelouch, through his action, prevented Mao from ever being a thorn in his side ever again. Siju killing Mao in that scene was just icing on the cake. Now that we've concluded how Lelouch handles Mao, let's move on to the Zero Requiem. Now, when most people talk about it, they only seem to discuss one specific aspect of the Requiem, which makes sense, and that's Lelouch's sacrifice as the greater evil to bring peace. But that only limits exactly what Lelouch did, as his final words state, I destroyed the world and created anew. So what exactly did Lelouch do to accomplish this? He commanded Schneisel to serve Zero, understanding that in times of peace, Schneisel would be a good leader. Forcing him to serve Zero would prevent Schneisel from undoing the changes that Lelouch did while Emperor of Britannia. He forced Britannia to join the UFN, limiting the world power, destroyed the monarchy, and removed the Flea warheads from existence. In addition, you can point to many examples during the Zero Requiem of Lelouch's intelligence on display. Here are some of my favorite examples. Lelouch's speech before the battle against Schneisel in turn 23 was an excellent one because he was using both verbal and kinesthetic intelligence to motivate his troops but also give a compelling speech. Another example, he used his Gias on Nully once he realized they won the same thing, which was to focus everyone's hatred to the Democles. I was quite impressed when he calculated the equation to stop the Flea warhead, or even his ability to convince Izaku to join him in the Zero Requiem. But my favorite moment where he demonstrates his intelligence is before he dies. Now don't get it twisted, I wasn't implying that Lush dying made me happy. I was just impressed with his acceptance of living up to his belief that the only ones who should kill are those prepared to be killed. The entire plan hinged on Lush accepting the fact that he would have to die for this to work, and he fully did because that's what he always wanted. And he died happy and content, accomplishing what he always wanted to do, which was create a gentler world for his sister Nunnally. This understanding of his motivations shows his high levels of intrapersonal intelligence. That was quite impressive, as we just went over everything that Lush did. Let's move on to Light Yagami's greatest feats of intelligence. The first one is going to be how he deals with Naomi. Light ran into a problem at the police station when he meets a woman named Naomi, who was the fiancé of the late Ray Pember. Light is immediately drawn to her because she tells the people she has important information about Kira. This leads to Light smooth talking his way to learn more about her. And since no one was at the police station, they walk outside to have a talk. Naomi reveals that Kira can kill in ways besides using heart attacks. She linked her husband showing someone an FBI badge to all the agents that Kira killed. The entire bus jacking as well. Light knew that if Naomi goes public, they will figure out he's Kira. So Light smooths talks Naomi to learn all she knew about the bus jacking. In secret, he writes her name down in the death note. To his surprise though, she doesn't die. He's shocked because based on his previous experiments, it should have worked. Light figured out that the name that Naomi originally gave him was an alias. So now he has to get her real name without revealing he knows that she gave him a fake one. His plan was simple and quite impressive considering he didn't have much time to think about it. He stalls her first by explaining to Naomi that for safety and security reasons, no one will be at the police station ever. Light bluffs by lying he's a member of the task force when Naomi becomes suspicious and calls him out on this supposed rule. Through more conversation, Naomi reveals that she was once an FBI agent and worked for L. Light then flatters her with a series of lies that complicate her abilities similar to when they first met. Light also made sure to mention that everyone on the task force is trustworthy to manipulate her. After Naomi states that Light reminds her of L, he then asks her if she wants to join the task force. When she shows interest, Light tries to talk her out of it by flattering her again. Naomi states she wants to stop Kira and nothing else matters. She then gives Light her driver's license and well, you know the rest. Now, even though this scene is really dark, I do enjoy Ryuk's laughter in these episodes, especially when she gives him 
the license. It really demonstrated the evil of Light's actions in this episode. From an analysis point of view, for a mere two episodes, we sure see Light put on a full display of his intelligences. The types that stick out to me are his interpersonal, verbal, logical, and kinesthetic. Light used his perfect understanding of Naomi's motivations and desires to tailor his words to form a positive connection with her where she felt comfortable in revealing secrets to him and we see this as soon as he meets her. He also figured out that Ryuk was laughing because the name was an alias. Light was able to keep a straight face the entire time he spoke to Naomi. This includes the time where he was flustered and annoyed by Ryuk's laughter and the situation itself. This is actually more impressive than you might think. Being a former FBI agent, Naomi was probably trained in understanding body language so she would have detected any lies from Light if he wasn't convincing. Not only does Naomi not detect any lies, but it goes so far that she trusts Light even thinking he could be L. The manner in which he kills her is also noteworthy. He wrote a means of suicide where no one would find her and even if they did, they would think it was due to the grief of Ray's death, not Kira. Light could only do this through what he learned through his early experiments with the Death Note, and disgusting and even evil application of his logical intelligence here at work. And as far as I know, they never did find the body. Okay, let's move on to Light's grandest plan in Death Note, which was to rescue Misa and kill L. Now the plan is a bit complicated, so let's go over it. Light takes Rem's death note, then switches the ownership of the two death notes in his possession, where you gets Rem and vice versa. Light said that this is important because they can't implicate Misa with the death note if they use his and not hers. This will come into play when they capture the third Kira using the death note. Light also needs Rem to be the Shinigami that appears when touching the death note, but we'll get to that later. Light then surrenders himself to police custody to prove his innocence. The idea here is if killings occur while he's in custody with 24-7 surveillance, he can't possibly be Kira. However, Light knows that even if the killing did start again, L would not be satisfied, so he prepared for this. He planned on working closely with L to catch the third Kira. Light also gives up ownership of the Death Note so he will lose his memories involving it. This helps make it more convincing that he's not Kira and allows Misa to regain ownership and more importantly, her memories. Before this, he told Rem to take the Death Note to someone who would use it and she chose a member of the Yatsuba group, Higuchi. Light planned on working with L after losing his memories and figured once they captured a the third Kira, he would get his Death Note back. Light also made sure that Ryuk wrote false rules so when the Death Note was captured, it would prove his and Misa's innocence. The one of importance was the 13 day rule. Once once Misa is let go and Light has his memories back, he asks her to dig up the death note that he buried to write Elle's name in, since he saw his name earlier. She forgot the name but does the I deal with Ryuk, and Light figured that Rem would not have done the deal if he didn't switch the books, which turned out to be the case because Rem was quite upset when she saw that Misa's lifespan was halved again. Once Misa tells Light she forgot, he utilized his backup strategy. Rem. Light knows that Rem will kill anyone that hurts Misa, including himself, so Light asked Misa to start killing people again after she's let go to make L suspicious of her. Light even presses the matter by asking what would happen if she was captured, and L said probably execution. After their encounter in the rain, L reveals his plan to solve the case. He was going to test the 13 day rule. Before he could, Rem wrote his name and Watri's name in the death note, killing all three of them in the process. The third person is herself. Misa is freed and cleared and L dies. There are definitely holes in this plan, but for the sake of this discussion, I'm assuming that Light somehow was able to accurately predict everything that would happen. What's fascinating is that this plan hinged on Light's interpersonal and intrapersonal intelligence. Light used his understanding of both Rem's and L's emotions and motivations against them. He was also correct in assuming that there were others out there who would also use the death note. From an intrapersonal intelligence point of view, Light understood his own motivations motivations well enough that if he lost his memories, he would help out the police capture Kira. I assume he bases on the other times he helped out the police on various cases. Another thing to consider also is that beyond his boredom, Light wanted to extract justice, and that was one of the motivations of becoming Kira. So this explanation is plausible. From the logical aspect of this, Light exploited the death note ownership rule. One scene of note that I don't think gets enough attention is the one in which Light plays hot potato with the death notes. Ryuk was initially confused because the death notes went in a circle, but the purpose was to explain to both the audience and the Shinigami how ownership of the death note works. Light explained it in a simple manner, which is something he does 
of most of his plans in Death Note. This is an excellent use of verbal linguistic intelligence. And another example, not relevant to this situation, but Light also used that when helping Sayu with her homework. The point is that Light is able to not only explain things in a convincing manner, but he also can explain things in a simple manner for anyone to understand, which is a good showing of intelligence. Now, despite some contrived elements to this plan, it was still quite brilliant. We've gone over the theory of multiple intelligences and how Light and Lush have used the different types in their plans. But where does that leave us? Who's smarter? Well, it's a cop out answer, but it depends on what you value more, intrapersonal or interpersonal intelligence. Because the different types of intelligences are not a hierarchy, meaning all are equally important, so we can only compare the same types for each character. So, the Lush is logical mathical to lights and so forth. This is also why an IQ test wouldn't prove anything since it doesn't measure all eight types of intelligences. After comparing each intelligence of the character to each other, I found them all to be basically equal except for two areas, intrapersonal and interpersonal intelligence. Lelouch has better intrapersonal intelligence and Light has stronger interpersonal intelligence. Here's how I know this. It's not a stretch to state that Light's plans only succeeded due to his understanding of others. Sure, he used deductive and logical reasoning, but I argue those were built on the understanding of others and not the other way around. Just look how he saved Misa and kills El, gets Naomi to reveal her name, or how he handles Misa, Taka, and Mikami. Light had a better understanding of people's emotions and motivations than Lelouch. Now before you comment, I'm not saying that Lelouch doesn't possess any interpersonal intelligence, just not to the same degree as Light. He understood people on a large scale, but failed many times when it came to individuals. Here are some examples. Lelouch never considered the backlash from both the Gias Order Massacre, or detonating the Sakurai in Gerald Katase's ship, while publicly declaring that the JLF chose to do this. And both of those events led to dissension among the Black Knights and eventually the betrayal. He didn't understand Colin and Shirley's feelings well enough to handle them, at least compared to how Light handles Taka and Misa. For the most part, it's not really a problem until the consequences of Shirley losing her memories and eventually her life. And at one point, Colin's loyalty and respect. One final example of his failure that I want to talk about was not joining Shinkei immediately instead of later on. If he understood Shinkei's motivations, that would have been the logical thing to do. Not to mention, they wouldn't have lost Colin to the enemy, which was a huge blow to the rest of the show until she was rescued. There are a couple counter arguments you could give here. The first being that Luge did understand the feelings and motivations of the most important people in his family, Nunnally, Yuffie, Corneli, and Schneisel, and then sometimes even his friends. The other thing to consider is that Kogias is a larger story with more characters and bigger conflicts, so having Luge focus on others in the same way as Light does would not be possible. However, I still hold that from what we got of Lelouch showing his interpersonal intelligence, I still found inferior to Light. I realized late into making this video that I didn't discuss Lelouch's handling of Rollo or Valletta as examples of his interpersonal intelligence. You can also argue that I'm understanding Lelouch's ability to keep the Black Knights united. It was something that Detard mentioned as the vital reason for why Zero is more important than any single member of the Black Knights. If you value either of these, along with the other examples of Lelouch's interpersonal intelligence already discussed in this video, then concluding that Lelouch is significantly smarter than Light is only logical. But even taking this into account, I still believe that Light has superior interpersonal intelligence. Now, as I mentioned before, Lelouch has superior intrapersonal intelligence when compared to Light. The best way to prove this is in the manner in which both characters died. Lelouch died happy and thankful, knowing he made the world a better place and more importantly, accomplishing what he always wanted. Light died with a mix of emotions of anger, confusion, regret, and ultimately dissatisfied with the outcome. And I think that's because he didn't really ever satisfy what he was trying to do because he didn't know what he wanted to do. I realize that this is a quick summary of how the two characters died so at some point I actually want to discuss this in a separate video because the topic is quite interesting. For the purpose of this video the point I'm making is this. Being able to relate to others might get you ahead in life but if you don't know what you really want in life there will never be any satisfaction to it which leads to a regretful life and only someone with high intra personal intelligence understands this. Now to answer the question what do I value more? Well the answer is intra personal intelligence. So with the smallest of margins I find Lelouch to be smarter than 
Light Yagami. And if you're wondering, when I first put this together, because I assume you think there was some kind of bias where I wanted to make Lelouch look smarter, I actually thought going through the evidence would prove Light to be the smarter character, so I was actually surprised. In some cases, pleasantly. And with that, we have come to the end. If you like this video, please check out my blog. Any video topic that's discussed here has already been written as an article, so if you want to get ahead of the game or see a longer explanation on certain topics, that's why I recommend going. Please grab my free anime streaming guide for August. I will leave a link in the description below. I hope you guys liked this video and topic, and keep in mind that to put this together, I had to cram 18 plus pages for the article I'm writing on this topic to a nine page script. There were so many things I wanted to mention, talk about, that didn't get mentioned in this video that the article will have if you're interested. In general, with the popularity of Kogias and Death Note only growing as years go on, I look forward to more comparisons of these characters and other aspects of the anime. Regardless of who you think is smarter, one thing that I learned from making this video, and I hope you guys did as well, is to appreciate the intelligence of both their plans were, meaning Light and Lelouch. And the only way you could really understand the intelligence of both these characters in general is through the theory of multiple intelligences. If you guys didn't like my analysis using the theory of multiple intelligences or anything else in the video, let me know in the comments below if I made any mistakes, etc, etc. I always love hearing you guys' comments and feedback. It makes my day and it's why I make these videos. I'm going to leave you guys with two quotes this time. Intelligence plus character, that's the mark of true education. And the usual one, which I do, which is, remember, the world's not a dark place and tomorrow will be a good day. Thanks for watching. Thank you.